Good morning, good afternoon, good evening guys, wherever you are on this beautiful world, whenever you're watching this video, welcome to the Bitcoin family channel for the newcomers. My name is Didi. Today, again, four amazing Bitcoin charts, a trading tip, a travel tip, some live advice, and of course, talking about the news while I'm walking here on this beautiful beach in Phuket, Thailand, guys. Um, let's quickly jump into the charts to show you exactly what is happening to Bitcoin at the moment. I told you, 50k is a huge number, huge area of resistance. Mentally, we need to break that 50k to be able to go higher and higher and higher. If not, we could also drop back a little bit to pick up some more liquidity. Now, now let's quickly jump into the charts to show you exactly what I see. Bam. The first chart for today is a four hour chart. Like you can see, there was a sell signal on the four hour chart. Uh, yesterday we talked about the one hour chart. I can also show you that one, of course, that is over here. That one hour chart also sold, uh, told us there was a sell signal. We closed the candles down below that yellow stepping line. So that could have been a beautiful moment to take your profits. But let's get back to that four hour chart now for a bit. This four hour chart is showing you, yes, Bitcoin was being dumped. Some people are taking profit of that moment on the top over there, but Look those long wicks to the bottom and those small bodies. This is upward pressure. This means the market wants Bitcoin to go higher. The market wants Bitcoin to break that 50K level in the weekly chart and stay above that 50K level. That is what the market wants because else we'd have seen small wicks to the bottom and large wicks to the top. So all these Bitcoins that are being sold are being bought up. And of course, a shitload of them is being bought up because of something that I'm going to talk about in the trading tip after this. Something is happening to the market, a side of TA, that is influencing the market tremendously. And that is why these Bitcoins are being bought up continuously, no matter how many people are dumping or selling the Bitcoins. But I will come back to that a little bit later. For now, I'm going to zoom out and look into some more interesting charts that you need to see today. This is the first one. This is the RSI chart, very simple chart that shows you exactly the buy signals just before each bull market and how that played out. So for example, look there in 2016, we had a buy signal of the RSI. From that moment, that blue line almost to the top of the bull market took 22 bars. So that's 22 months from the buy signal in RSI to the top in 2017 bull market December. The second time that we saw that buy signal in the RSI was just before 2020, in 2019. That was, of course, after that crash from 14K to 3K levels. From that moment, it took 21 bars till the bull market top in 2021. It was 21 months. Now, we just saw another buy signal. Don't be fooled, the second part of that blue line is hand drawn. The darker blue, that's the official one that is now above that dotted line. That's why we see that buy signal. But that second light blue line that is being drawn by hand. This is the trajectory that Bitcoin could do all the way up to the 2025 top. If that now would decrease again by one month, that would mean that from 22 bars to 21 bars, it will take 20 bars from that buy signal till the bull market top. That would put us at the moment in July 2025. I believe that the top will be after September 2025. But still, this is a possibility when we analyze the information that we have, when we just look at the TA. It could also already happen in July 2025. The most important thing is that you need to understand that that buy signal was there, that blue line is just above that dotted line, and there is a huge, massive potential for the blue line to go much higher to the downward white trend line. So that will mean there will be a huge profit in each and every Bitcoin that you will be buying today. Then we have this one. We have the comparison between gold and Bitcoin after the first spot ETF was launched. When gold was uh, launched, the spot ETF, it risen 6.17 times since uh, that moment. So we were with gold at the zero. So gold is the white line and Bitcoin, of course, is that orange line. Now, if we now compare where we are at the moment with Bitcoin to the moment where we were with gold at that moment, we can see that we are still very low. That means that the Bitcoin price, if it would perform the same way as gold, would go way much higher up 
to that same level of the white line. I think the Bitcoin line is gonna outperform gold because when gold spot ETF was created, there was a shitload of new miners popping up all over the United States that started to mine gold, the gold rush, which means there was more and more gold coming to the market and suppressed the gold price that could have gone way higher if there was no more supply coming to the market. In Bitcoin, it's the opposite. From this moment, there is not more supply coming to the market. There is less supply coming to the market daily from April, which means we could really outperform gold when it comes to the spot ETFs. And we can see this already in the numbers as the top two Bitcoin spot ETFs are the biggest spot ETFs ever launched before. Gold is not even near it. Interesting chart. Pause it to analyze it a bit more. Then a chart that I have been sharing with you guys already for years, the MVRVZ score. Just look to the yellow dollar line. Whenever we passed the yellow dollar line with that orange line, that is an indication, the start of the second part of that bull market. The bottom was in, we bought the bottom, we already doubled in price, we already made a shitload of profits, but now, when we break that dollar line, the second part of the run is going to start, and that is the part where we will make the most profits. As you can see, all the way in 2012, when we broke that dollar line, the orange line started to peak, and the Bitcoin price as well. When we did this in 2016, same thing. After halving, we broke it, we went up, and the price started to run up tremendously. In 2019, we did it two times. One time from 3 to 14k that run, we came back, COVID crash, and then again when we broke it, bam, massive run, but we had a distribution top at the top. Now again, that orange line touched that dotted line. We pulled back a little bit. We will break that dotted line very soon. The moment we will break that dotted line, probably after the halving, we will go into that massive run of the second part of the bull market, which will lead to more profits than we already have. Please remember, we all bought Bitcoin between 16 and 20K. We are at 50K already. We more than doubled our capital already at the moment. And we are gonna double or triple or quadruple it again from this moment. These two years, 2024 and five, are gonna be very beautiful, explosive years when it comes to your investment in Bitcoin. Then the last chart, guys, is this one. Um, and this chart is showing you that every time when we reach that 0.618 level that there is a possibility of a pullback because we have never broken that 0.618 level before the halving yet in any of the previous bull market. Just check it every time again and again. When we came near that 0.618 level before the halving, there was a rejection. We fell down a little bit towards the halving, climbing up again, and then after the halving, breaking that level. All the way there, back down in 2016, before the halving, we reached the level, we pulled back towards the halving, and then, bam, went up. 2019, 0.618 level, a little bit disturbed chart because of the COVID crash, but we pulled back after reaching the level, and then, bam, build up to that huge top. Now, in 2024, we are reaching that level of 0.618 again. Will, be, will this again be a rejection? Will we again pull back and then towards that halving climb up to 50K again and then make that massive run? Or are we gonna flip this line for the first time ever in Bitcoin's history? That is the important thing now. And it's all coming down to the weekly close that we're gonna see in a couple of days. If that candle will close above this line, the 0.618 level, which is around 50K, like 49,500, I think. If you will close above that one, that is massively bullish for Bitcoin because that would be the first time ever and probably the result of all that new liquidity coming into the market because of the spot ETS, because of the retail investors, and because of all these governments all over the world understanding the power of Bitcoin and trying to make Bitcoin a legal tender and by that also putting into the balance sheet of their government or into the treasury chests of their governments. Yes, Bitcoin is almost there. The adoption is growing worldwide, not only as a peer-to-peer, -peer, but also as a store of value. Among all those huge investment companies like BlackRock, Vanguard, and all of them, they're all buying up a shitload of Bitcoin because they want to make profits for their clients. So that could lead to the first time ever in Bitcoin's history 
that we will close above this dotted line. It doesn't mean it will close above the dotted line because if we will be rejected, be prepared to see another 20% crash to even maybe down below 40k again to 38k to pick up more liquidity over there and be prepared to put your buy orders at these levels. 38k, maybe even 34k, maybe even 31k if you really believe in a big crash. Put your buy orders there because if it will happen, in my honest opinion, it can only be a flash crash. It will flash crash down and then a shitload of liquidity is being bought up again by the spot ETS and it will pump up directly again towards that halving line around 50k. That were the charts for today. I hope you really enjoyed those charts, guys. Yes, always the same picture again and again and again every day. You need to zoom out in Bitcoin. We are going up sky high after this halving. And towards this halving, we can still be a little bit volatile. Just like you saw in that first chart, we have never broken that 0.618 level before the halving. Mostly when we reach that level of the Fibonacci retracement, we fall back a little bit and then pump again after the halving. So the previous three bull markets, we didn't break it before the halving. And now we broke that very important Fibonacci level already before the halving. If we close this candle above 49K, we have broken that level before the halving for the first time in history of Bitcoin. That's a beautiful moment and that is really, really, really bullish for Bitcoin, guys really bullish with Bitcoin because that could lead to a massive pump from that halving on guys. And it's very important to understand that these Fibonacci levels are very important levels. They play a role in history in all the TA that we have seen guys. So be prepared that if we close this candle above it that we will <laughs> I know that you're laughing now. Yes, his eyes, his eyes. <laughs> that if we close the candle above it, yes, that will be very important. And it will lead to a massive push in Bitcoin, guys. Now, let's jump into the trading tip. The trading tip for the day is that aside of TA, you always need to look at all the other data that is available in a market. For example, at the moment in the Bitcoin market, we know TA is always doing his job, but we also know that the pump of the Bitcoin price is depending on the liquidity that comes into the market, new liquidity. And as we analyze that market at the moment, we know that the spot ETFs are making sure there is a shitload of new liquidity flowing into this market. So when you notice, you start to analyze these numbers so you get a little bit of an idea on how much this could influence the price. Now, at the moment we saw, for example, on the 12th of February, that around 10,000 Bitcoins flowed into the market. That's around 500 million US dollar worth of Bitcoin. If we now look at how many Bitcoins are being created on that same day, we can see, because it's a blockchain, it's completely transparent, an average is like 950 Bitcoin, but that day, 1,025 Bitcoins or something were created. So there is a demand on that day of 10,000 Bitcoins. There is this new supply on that day of 1,000 Bitcoins. So these other 9,000 Bitcoins need to be bought off the market or on exchanges or in any other creative way that I don't know of yet. If this will continue, the demand of 10,000 Bitcoins every day or even only 5,000 Bitcoins every day, and we are only creating 1,000 Bitcoins a day, what do you think that will happen? And now the most important part is from the halving in April, that's in two months, it's not 1,000 Bitcoins created every day, but only 450, let's say 500 Bitcoins created every day. And at that moment, demand probably of those spot ETS, retail investors and all those combined will be massively increased above 10,000 Bitcoins per day. So just imagine only 500 Bitcoins per day are being created after the halving in April 2024. And at the moment, the demand is around 10,000 Bitcoins a day. And the more the Bitcoin price will go up, the more the retail investors will FOMO in, the more demand there will be. There will be a huge demand for Bitcoin and we won't be able to offer them all those Bitcoins at the same price because the supply is just not there. We are all not willing to sell our Bitcoins at 50K, 60K, 70K, 80K, 
maybe at 80k some of us start to be willing to sell our bitcoins but all the way till that moment you will see a huge amount of demand not too much supply so the trading tip for today is that you always need to recognize these trends always need to calculate all those numbers not only ta not the news but also all the other numbers that are traceable on the blockchain that you can analyze because this whole game is built out of supply and demand and if you understand that the demand at the moment is massive but the supply is decreasing then you will understand that the price will need to go up that's how it works now that was the trading tip for today look at other aspects of the market as well I will turn around guys and try to walk in the shadow not only for the warmth but also um, for the image because it's really blocking the screen a little bit when I walk that side uh, the travel tip for today is always carry on a noise cancelling headphones these are amazing I didn't travel with them for many years and since two years I've been traveling with these noise cancelling headphones they are not only come in handy when you're flying in an airplane or riding a bus or whatever that makes a lot of noise because when you put them on you don't hear anything of that noise it also comes in handy you know and I had three little kids I know how they are when you are in the plane or in a very busy place and you have these kids running around and screaming and yelling while you're listening to a beautiful podcast of the Bitcoin family or something like that they come in very handy because it blocks out all the noise around you I find that I sleep better in an airplane or in a bus or any other form of transportation when I'm wearing this because it cancels out all the noise that I just don't want to hear so the travel tip for today is always carry on these noise cancelling headphones you have the small ones you have the big ones you have them in all sizes guys these noise cancelling headphones I'm not talking about that because yes also the booties you have in all sizes but we were not talking about that we were talking about noise cancelling headphones they are amazing to catch a little bit better deeper sleeps and also of course the sound quality of the music is beautiful as well or when you watch or listen a YouTube video of the Bitcoin family don't forget by the way to subscribe to this channel and share it with all your friends and family because I want to reach 100k subscribers before Bitcoin reaches 100k even better I want to reach 75k subscribers before Bitcoin will reach 75k please help me with that by sharing this video again with all your friends and family that was a travel tip let's continue the next part is answering one of the questions of the followers the question was a very long question I will paste it over here but you won't be able to read it because it's a very long one but to sum it up is he didn't really agree with me because he's like Didi what will happen when the governments will take complete control of the internet and they determine if you get a connection to the internet or not you need to do like KYC to be able to use the internet at that moment then they can stop any of your transactions because they know ah this is Didi he is using the internet to send bitcoins can they do this is it possible for the government to stop you transacting your bitcoins uh, when they will like completely control the internet I need to think a little bit about that but I think I have an answer I don't think they can't first of all the government can't control all the internets because there is a shitload of new ways of internet being decentralized for example Elon Musk satellites you know those trains that you see in the sky sometimes these can't be controlled by the government I don't think that Elon Musk will let the government control his satellites so that's the first second thing I think there is already more companies that are creating decentralized internet and that will make sure that transaction information knowledge will always be freely available on the internet it works very simple if you look back in history every time when the governments want to try to stop certain things in life there is a group of people that stands up and that creates something new that will make it impossible for those governments to stop that certain step that they want to take it happened every time and again and again why because we people we have the urge to have and protect our freedom and we will always invent something new that will help us to do this that is exactly how Bitcoin was started it was started because the banks were built out again in 2008 and 9 by the governments with the tax money that we were paying to those governments so they promised us 
yeah, if you pay tax, we will do this and we will do that and we will help poor people and we will build schools and we will create better roads and we will solve all the traffic jams problems. That's what they promised us when you pay tax. But what did they do? They used that tax money to bail out the banks. So when people start to understand, hey, this is fucked up, we are paying so many tax and they don't do what they promise, let's start a new monetary system so that we can have our own decentralized monetary system, which was called Bitcoin. A solution was created by the people for the issues created by centralized entities like the government. And that will happen every time and again and again. So if they want to block you from using the internet by requiring you to do KYC and all that stuff to even access the internet, there will be new alternative, decentralized alternatives to connect to the internet. And by the way, uh, it's already possible to send Bitcoin also using radio frequencies, and there will be possibilities with other satellites. There will be possibilities probably to send Bitcoins in the future, maybe with the new advanced Bluetooth feature that then automatically, you know, that, that automatically syncs all over the world. Man, we don't know where the technology will go, but we do know that the technology is going forward. And yes, we do know that the people are getting sicker and sicker and sicker of all the centralized control of governments. We don't want a world that looks like, for example, the whole social credit system that we see in China. That's what we are all fighting for. That's why we are supporting blockchain. That's why we're supporting Bitcoin. So I don't believe, one, that the internet will be fully controlled by the government. I always think that there will be alternatives that we will be able to use as the people, as we are all freedom-minded. There will be one guy standing up saying, hey, I created this new awesome internet that everyone can use. And yes, we are then disconnected from the government and we are completely anonymous. And the possibility is there to completely use it in a decentralized way for everyone out there in a very cheap way. Even the poorest of the poorest people will be able to have internet and be able to use the Bitcoin blockchain to transact value all over the world. So for me, we will always be three steps ahead of the governments. But whatever that they might come up with, we already will have the solution. So I don't believe that. So for me, the ramp situation that you're talking about, why I should advise people to be also in gold and silver and other stuff, is not there. I don't believe in that ramp situation that Bitcoin or internet will be forbidden by the governments because there will always be freedom fighters that will come up with a new solution. But I don't want people to get stuck in these traditional forms of assets like gold and silver. It's nice to diversify it, but not when it's completely centralized controlled. If you are able to travel all over the world and keep that gold that you want to have in your pockets, be my guest. But the moment you need to store that gold in a bank or any other company that is centralized and that can be closed by the government or, you know, that is the moment I say, stop it, don't do that. Then I would stay in the digital gold of the 21st century Bitcoin or the digital silver, maybe Litecoin or Ethereum or whatever currency you see as a digital silver, guys. But these traditional assets will be outpaced by all these new assets in this digital world that we are going towards. That's my honest opinion to that question. Hopefully you enjoyed that answer. If you didn't enjoy it, then give it also a thumbs up. <laughs> and if you did enjoy it, then give it two thumbs ups. Now let's move on to the next part. The next part is the news, guys. And the news for today um, it's very cool news because the news for today is that Ledger wants to simplify crypto purchases by working together with Coinbase. Now you might think I would be cheering towards that. Like, like wow, I'm so happy because now Coinbase is making it possible that I buy uh, Bitcoins directly with my Ledger. But that's just not the case. I am not happy with that. And I will tell you exactly why I'm not happy with this. Because as you all know, Coinbase is a very centralized company. It's a US company. They have the complete KYC, AML, whole structure built up. It's almost impossible to buy Bitcoins in a non-KYC with Coinbase. So why would I be happy now that that one that has all your data will be connected to your ledger? That's like stupid. Because if you then would use your ledger to buy these Bitcoins on Coinbase, all your data is verified and connected to that ledger. So then Coinbase knows exactly which Bitcoins are bought with which ledger and they know exactly which ledger is belonging to which person. You don't want that. You don't want that. That's complete centralized control. That's like 
Giving up your freedom for what? Giving up your freedom for the luxury of being able to buy Bitcoin in a very simple way, while you could do it in a very easy way without Coinbase as well. There is many non-KYC possibilities to buy Bitcoin still at the moment, so don't get caught into that centralized data collection that they are now putting up onto the people. Making it easy for you to buy Bitcoin. So yes, making it easy and insightful for them to see which ledgers belong to who. You don't want to do that. You don't want them to know which ledger is yours because that's completely anonymous at the moment. All your Bitcoins and cryptocurrencies are anonymous there. If you now connect that ledger data with Coinbase, that would be terrible, guys. So that is not happy news. For all those people now thinking it's happy news, definitely not happy news. Terrible news. We don't want that. We want a complete anonymous Bitcoin on our ledger. Our ledger must not be known by all centralized entities. Please, let that be a lesson. Don't connect your ledger to any centralized form of on-ramp because they will know that the ledger is yours and you just don't want that. Now, let's jump into the next part. And the last part of the video, guys, is of course the inspirational part. Today, again, a beautiful quote. Optimism is the fate that will lead to achievement. And I think it's a very simple to understand quote, but a very powerful quote. Because when we are optimistic, you will achieve everything you want in life. The moment you are not optimistic, you won't achieve all those goals that you want to achieve. And that's why optimism is, of course, the faith of achievement. It's very important, guys. If you want to achieve all those goals in life that you want to achieve, you need to be optimistic. If you're negative in this downward spiral, you won't find your own belief, your own conviction, your own optimistic view of everything that's happening around you, and you won't achieve any goals. It all starts with optimism. And you can do that in a very simple way by waking up every morning and being very positive to yourself. Start to being very thankful for everything that you have in the morning so you realize how rich as a person you are, not only materialistic stuff, also family-wise, time-wise, everything that you're thankful for. Start with that in the morning. Then you already feel very optimistic. You are like, wow, I have a very beautiful life. I'm very optimistic. And then just walk out the door and just be happy towards all the people that you meet or any situation that you might run into. Treat it with an optimistic view of life. Just treat it very optimistic. And you will see that all these small things matter tremendously and it will change your life tremendously as well. Because when you're optimistic, many people around you also will be optimistic. They will be affected by your optimism. They will be like, wow, look that guy or that girl glowing. That's such a positive person. I want to be near him. I want to suck up all the positivity he has. And then you create this beautiful trend of positive people all around you. So for me, optimism is the faith that will lead to achievement. So start small, start in the morning, be positive, be optimistic of all the hurdles you need to overcome, be optimistic of all the jobs need to be done that day. Be optimistic even with bringing the kids to school. I know that can be a hassle in the morning. Oh God, waking them all up, bringing them to school, all that stuff I know is not easy. I know it's a long way in the morning when they start to do stupid stuff already from minute one when they wake up and they're like, no, I don't want to eat this. No, I don't want to wear those clothes. No, I don't want to go to school. I know it's not always easy, but even in those moments, Try to be optimistic about the end result. Try to be optimistic. You will be able to bring them to school. You know, that's the first step maybe. And from that moment, you take it to the higher levels and to more optimistic situations and try to be optimistic. Then during the whole day, affect all people around you. Just ignore all the negativity and all the thoughts that pop into your head. Ah, maybe not, maybe this. I'm so mad. I'm so fucking triggered by all those people around me. No, optimistic because optimism is the faith that will lead to achievement. You achieving all the goals that you have set for yourself. That was everything for today, guys. I hope you really enjoyed today's video. If you did enjoy today's video, then please give the video a thumbs up, share it with your friends and family, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and leave a comment what you think about the charts, the video, and everything else. Thank you for watching. Wish you an amazing day, and see you tomorrow again. Bam.